Hi, welcome back to Flywheel Films. Don't you hate it when you get involved in some sort of red light accident or even a hit and run? Or when you're the subject of someone looting your parked car or destroying it? It's all too often when it's your word against theirs and there's no external witnesses to verify the truth. It's 2020, why don't all cars have dash cams as standard? I know the C8 Corvette has them, Teslas, some other cars, but they're still an anomaly. I get the counter argument, privacy concerns, etc., but it should at least be an option to have it turned off or on. So I've heard many stories firsthand of how dash cams are beneficial, especially improving one person's word against another. Even on a parked car, if your dash cam is visible through the windshield, it may deter criminal activity, even if it's not on. But don't just take my word for it. Here's an insurance expert to tell you facts. That's right, I'm an insurance expert. And by that, I mean I was a claims adjuster for one whole year. Basically, I was the guy that determined how at fault you or another driver was in an accident. And that's why dash cams are so important because it takes the power away from the claims adjuster and puts it back into the hands of the safest driver, which is hopefully you. Picture this. You're driving around the suburbs of Los Santos in your new Bravado Banshee. You come to a four-way stop and see another car coming to your right. You don't think much of it, so you continue on. Next thing you know, wham, accident. There's no witnesses, and police are only obligated to take statements, not determine who's at fault. So, you take that information and file with the other party's insurance company, because they should pay for your damage, right? Three days later, they call and deny your claim. Their driver said you ran the stop sign and hit them. Now, you have to file with your own insurance company just to get your car fixed. And because there's not enough proof of who is at fault, your case will sit in arbitration for months before a decision is made, and there's no guarantee they will actually pick your side. This sucks, right? Well, this all could have been avoided if you had a dash cam. Insurance adjusters, by law, have to use all available information when making a decision. And it's hard to argue with live footage. Bottom line, insurance insures your car, but a dash cam insures you, the driver, from being wrongfully convicted of an accident you didn't commit. So put the phone down, pay attention, and get a dash cam. So in my wife's escape, I got a front and rear dash cam set up. With the Miata, which almost never has a rear window, top-down life, I opted for a two-in-one. That way I have the front-facing camera and a rear-facing camera on the same unit that can be rotated and adjusted to the level I need. For both cars, I just went on Amazon and found cameras that looked decent, had the features I wanted, and had good reviews. So I decided I wanted 1080p, full HD, but nothing more in an effort to keep file sizes to a minimum. The camera also specified a maximum of 32 gigabyte SD cards, so that gives me the most footage per card. Modern cameras do have the loop recording feature, so as they spill up, the old files get deleted in place of new files. It even has a G-Force option to where it fits in what it deems as an accident G-Force. It'll lock the file to prevent it from being deleted when it's loop recording. What? <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about installing a dash cam on an NC Miata. I opted for the correct way, which basically means hardwiring it rather than relying on a cigarette lighter or a USB port. So as per usual, test it before you fully install it. So many dash cameras actually provide you with power to go to the cigarette lighter or USB port. But because I'm doing the correct install I mentioned earlier, I actually needed a hardwiring kit, often a fuse tap. Here's one I got, I'll link it below. When determining the fuse, make sure you go to the forums and definitely your user manual to make sure you tap the right one. Ideally one that's not drawing power all the time. You don't want to drain your battery when you're not with your car for long extended periods of time. In my case, I went with an accessory fuse that comes on with the engine. A huge benefit of the fuse tap is that it's fully reversible. No cutting, no splicing. The fuse tap basically plugs into the normal fuse and then it has a spot for an additional fuse provided with the power supply. This provides the AC power to the camera and you'll also need to ground the other side. 
There's a small 10 millimeter bolt right behind the fuse box that is super convenient to use for grounding. Hallelujah, it worked. So, the interior fuse box seems to come on only when you turn the engine on. Just turning it to accessory doesn't always light the fuses. I almost gave up because it wasn't coming on with accessory power. So that's something to note. But it works. That's all that matters. Now you can start running the wire up the side of the car. Well, let's start removing the top interior windshield surround. You'll need a T30 and a T40 bit to undo the screws that hold on the top. Once you take the T40 screws out to remove the roof catches on either side, the uh, driver's side A-pillar trim just pulls right out, just a couple tabs. The top pulls down with a few more tabs. They're really kind of hard. Interior trim tools do help quite a bit to get this done. You just need to funnel the wire along it, and you can even use little adhesive wire holders or something to keep it in place. It's also ideal to remove the driver's side door sill and the trim surrounding the fuse box and obviously the fuse box lid itself. Well, that wasn't so bad. The quality is decent, it's not terrible, it's not great. It's a little grainy, you know, the run of the mill for a cheap-ish dash cam. But it helps you see what's in front of you and what's behind you. I don't think any US companies currently offer incentives for installing dash cams, but I hope that changes. Other countries do, and I would think it would save everyone involved time and money. However, if I am in an accident, this should help clarify any doubt of what transpired. If you do want to dish out for premium quality, some of the best ones can rival even sort of a GoPro, so you can you know, assess your track times, remember your fun drives, or even make YouTube videos. So maybe I should have gotten a better quality camera for my YouTube videos. Well, that's it for me. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, because more content is coming down that pipeline. Until then, peace. All those other things didn't even Yeah. <laughs>